Welcome to question 8 of the 2010 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 8 we're told that the discrete random variable x has the following probability distribution given in the table and we're asked to find the value of p. So we can see that p appears as the probabilities for x is negative 1 through to x is 2 and that we know that the sum of all of those probabilities needs to add up to 1. So we have p squared plus p squared which will give 2p squared plus p divided by 4 plus 4p plus 1 divided by 8 is equal to 1. Now to help simplify this down we're going to start by multiplying everything by 8 and that will get rid of our denominators. So when we do that we will get 16p squared plus and p divided by 4 times 8 gives 2p and then 4p plus 1 divided by 8 when we times that by 8 we'll just give plus 4p plus 1 equals and don't forget the right hand side 1 times 8 gives 8 and then the next thing that we have to do if we're going to solve what is now a quadratic equation is get it equal to 0 so therefore we get that 16p squared and then we have 2p plus 4p gives plus 6p and then we need to subtract 8 which will give minus 7 equals 0. So that quadratic's not the simplest that there are to solve. So there's a couple of options. We could try and factorise it or we could use something like the general quadratic formula. So using the general quadratic formula we have p would be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared subtract 4ac all divided by 2a. And for this, we would have a is equal to 16. We would have b is equal to 6, so that's the coefficient of the p term. And that c is equal to negative 7, so that's the constant value. So next up, we have to substitute that into the formula. So therefore, we find that p would equal minus b, which is minus 6. And then we would have plus or minus the square root of we would have b squared which is 6 squared minus 4 times a which is 16 times c which is minus 7 and all of that would be divided by 2a but a is 16 and now our job here is simply to simplify that down to see what values we get so therefore p would equal minus 6 plus or minus and then this square root I'm going to do in purple just because we're going to need to have a bit more of a play with it we have 6 squared is 36 and then we have subtract 4 times 16 times negative 7 so the two negatives will give a positive and if you do take your time to evaluate that you'll get 448 and then all of that is divided by 2 times 16 which is 32 and now we'll just have a look at that square root in a bit more detail so 36 plus 448 gives the square root of 484 and now we need to try and simplify that. So the first square number that I think is going to go into that is 4. So this could be written as the square root of 4 times. We know it goes 100 and then it goes into 80 20 times and 4 once. So this is going to be the square root of 121. Now they're both numbers you should recognise. The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 121 is 11. Which means that this is simply equal to 22. So therefore, when we're solving for p, we will get p is equal to minus 6 plus or minus. And now instead of the square root of a number, we just have 22, all divided by 32. So this will give us two options. The first is that p is equal to minus 6 minus 22, which is minus 28 on 32. And the second option is that p is equal to minus 6 plus 22, which is positive 16 on 32. However, as we're dealing with a probability distribution, we know that all probabilities must be 0 or greater than 0, but also less than 1. And up here we have p divided by 4. So we need p divided by 4 to be greater than 0, which means that p must be greater than 0. So if we know p is greater than 0, the only value of p that we can have is going to be 16 on 32, which is a half. So that is the answer for this question. So from the examiner's report, we can see that a third of students got full marks for this, with a lot of students only getting zero or one marks. 
So you can see down here, this is the method of solving by factorizing. So it can be used to get the same p equals a half, or we use the quadratic formula on the previous slide, which is what's also shown as another alternative in the examination advice. So what the examiners did describe is that many students had difficulty with this question, and that's unsurprising considering the amount of calculations that you'd need to perform to get that answer correct. And although most students understood that the probabilities should add to one, a number of students incorrectly worked with the expected value of x equals one instead by mistake. Furthermore, some students struggled to rearrange to make the quadratic equal to zero, which is what we need to do if we're gonna solve a quadratic equation and that the use of the quadratic formula, which students should be familiar with, was quite poor. And where the quadratic formula was used correctly, some students could not identify p equaling 0.5 as the solution. So that is just a timely reminder that the general quadratic formula is an important way to solve quadratics when we need it, and that you should be comfortable with simplifying numeric fractions down to p equals a half, or similar to that, to find solutions to these sorts of equations.